Good morning, everyone. I actually got some sleep last night. Um, I feel weird. But anyways, so I found something interesting. So while we have regular ETFs, they're leveraged. They get their leverage from things like options and futures, right? Typically, that is how ETFs typically work. When you use derivatives and swaps, you're talking synthetic ETFs. That's right. A synthetic ETF is a pooled investment that invests money in derivatives and swaps rather than physical stock shares. Now, some critiques of this um, is the fact that um, several risks, including counterparty risk or collateral risk, liquidity risk, and potential conflicts of interest could arise. Now, basically, by definition, synthetic ETFs require the involvement of two parties, both of which must live up to their side of the obligation, and the use of collateral can help mitigate the risks. So as we all know, there's been a somewhat of a collateral crisis in the market, and it's likely due to these instruments. So basically, two, uh, 2008 2.0, we basically have ETFs that are leveraged with synthetic ETFs. <laughs> so ETFs of synthetic ETFs of ETFs. It's insane. Now, the swaps that we see that are in these uh, holdings of these ETFs are total return swaps which in that event, one party makes payments according to a set rate while the other party makes payments based on the rate of an underlying reference asset. Basically allows them to, um, the party receiving the total return swap, it allows them to benefit from the reference asset without owning it. Now the receiving party also collects any income generated by the asset, but in exchange must pay a set rate over time or, or over the life of the swap. The receiver assumes systematic and credit risk whereas the payer assumes no performance risk, but takes on the credit exposure the receiver may be subject to. So now that we know all that, I wanted to reiterate what I found yesterday. Um, I was looking into some ETFs known to have exposure to GameStop and AMC. Now, the ones exposed to or have exposure to AMC, we have two leveraged ETFs, UWM and URTY, um, all of them are pro shares issued, which BlackRock issues the pro shares ETFs. These are all BlackRock related. So we have SAA is the only one that's leveraged that has GameStop exposed in it. And we have UWM and URTY with AMC exposure. Now, this video expands on that. And I'll link that previous video um, at the end of this one if you're not sure what I'm talking about here. But basically, expanding on this. I found a couple of synthetic ETFs, again from BlackRock, again pro shares. One of them has AMC exposure, one of them has no GME or AMC exposure, and I wanted to show you guys the HDG synthetic ETF. So this is the top 10 holdings of the HDG, and it's literally called a hedge replication ETF. Now look at these top 10 holdings. Um, sorry about the video. It's Let me actually move this up so you can see it. Um, AMC is actually in here. Let's see if you can see it now. Ah. Okay, so you can see AMC right here at the bottom. Um, as far as shares, not that many, but again, this is a synthetic ETF. So, I mean, look at these holdings. You got Euro, E-mini, S&P 500. So this makes sense. This setup here, makes absolute sense when you're talking about a synthetic ETF. You would expect swaps to be in there. Now, as far as the top holdings, not sure about that, but um, as far as notational value, nothing too crazy. Now, it is interesting to note that the EAFE indexes are both negative in their exposure. So we also have the RAFI, which is long slash short. Um, this is their top holdings and they're all uh, FTSC, Rafi, and Russell 1000 related. Again, negative exposure here, so I found that interesting. Now the Rafi long short, um, it says right here, can serve as a valuable component of an alternative asset allocation in a well-balanced core portfolio. It seeks to isolate the potential for outperformance of the Rafi fundamental methodology by taking long positions in the Rafi and short positions in the Russell 1000. Okay, so that explains why the Russell 1000 is negative so they're short on the Russell 1000 and they're long on the FTSE. 
which I know is in London, okay? <laughs> so basically now we're gonna go to ProShares and look at this HWG uh, replication ETF. Check this out. Serves as valuable component of alternative asset allocation. Benefits from the index expertise of Merrill Lynch, a pioneer in hedge fund replication. Basically, it's a liquid and flexible way to access the risk or return characteristics of a hedge fund investing without many of the challenges. So the fact that we have ETFs out here that are synthetic acting as hedge funds just blows my mind. Now distributions, um, so these, these ETFs pay dividends, right? Their last payable date was the 29th, but they didn't pay anything. So I found that interesting. Daily holdings, of course, we just looked at, but they also hold things like OVV, Crocs, AMC. They have a treasury bill on here for 29 million um, with a that's 67% of their holdings. And the, the odd thing is, is that when you look at all of these swap setups, there's really no percentage of holdings here. I think you have to go to yahoo.com to see the actual percentage. Uh, Yeah, so if we go to Yahoo, I think we may get a percentage. So if we go to holdings now, jeez, it's being slow. Okay, it's already in holdings, perfect. Yeah, so like we're over, we're over a hundred percent of total assets. We see the percentage of the treasury bill like we did on the ProShares website. But uh, then you can see here that uh, these swaps are eating up, you know, a little bit more than what they should have. So, and this is the case for most of them. So, like, if we go to URTY again, I think it's right here. And that's HDG. This one's HDG. RALS. Um, we get percentages on the underlying assets, but not the swaps. So, if we go to URTY, hurdy erdy, go to their holdings. Let's check on Yahoo, actually. Oh, no, wrong one. One of them was like 200-something percent over. Yeah, right here. 249.34%. So we can see here that the Russell 2000 swap accounts for 94% of their holdings. So when it, when you add up the first two, it doesn't make sense because we're over 100%. You see what I'm, you see what I'm seeing here? I mean, it, none of this makes sense. So I was told that you know that all I'm doing is identifying you know how they get their leverage, but that's not the case. If you're using a synthetic ETF, yes, swaps and derivatives make sense. But if you're using a normal leveraged ETF, you should be using options or futures, not. <laughs> not uh, swaps. So interesting stuff here. I'll leave you guys with this one and uh, find anything else I'll let y'all know, but I'm going to keep digging.